Welcome back guys, this is Jason, KM4ACK. Today, let's take a few minutes to discuss APRS voice alerts. Stick around and we'll get right to it. Hey, a couple of things before we get started. First, this was a request from one of my patrons over on Patreon. Uh, but if you guys have an idea for a video, feel free to send me an email, mycall at arrl.net, or you can leave it in the comments below. Uh, second of all, I am no expert on this subject. I have only recently started playing with this. Uh, I've done a lot of reading on it, and I think I've got a pretty good handle on uh, exactly what this is, how to use it, uh, and whatnot. But if you see something I miss in this video, don't hesitate to leave a comment down below. You can help us all out that way. All right, let's get to it. So first of all, what is APRS Voice Alert? Uh, it's a way to reach out to other ham radio operators to make a contact uh, when you don't know exactly what frequency they may be uh, currently monitoring on the other side of their radio. So if you've got a dual band radio, uh, typically uh, I'm gonna use the FTM 400 because that's the one I have and I'm uh, the one I'm familiar with. Uh, the way that works is I keep the primary voice frequency on band A and then APRS is running on band B. So I, I broadcast out the information in my APRS signal as to what band I'm monitoring on the A band, um, but for whatever reason, let's say maybe I'm out of town, I'm still monitoring my home frequency, but I'm out of range of that repeater. Uh, this is a way that you could still get in touch with me if uh, using APRS voice alerts. And this works with most modern APRS radios. And a little later after we've gone through kind of the uh, description of this and how it works, I'll actually go through setting this up on the FTM 400. Okay, so how does all of this work? Well, you have to set your radio up correctly, uh, but you set it up to use a tone of 100. Uh, so what happens once you, uh, once you set your radio up to use that tone, you can turn the volume all the way up on your APRS, on the APRS side of your radio. So in my case, the B band. Uh, but you'll no longer hear most of the packets coming through. Now everything still works uh, just like it normally would. So you'll still get uh, the stations and the objects and other things to pop up on your screen. APRS messages still works the same way, but you just won't hear anything coming out of your radio. So everything functions the same, it just basically mutes the audio. And gateways don't use the Tone 100, and that's the reason that it silences uh, the audio coming out of the APRS side of the radio. However, when another APRS station comes into simplex range of your radio, then if they're using the voice alert, they're also transmitting out the tone of 100. When they get into simplex range, it's going to break the squelch on your radio or open the squelch up, and you'll hear their packets come through the APRS side of the radio. This alerts you that somebody else is within range. Usually then you'll see a pop-up on your screen and it'll give you uh, relative distance information as to how far away that station is. Now, once you're uh, within simplex range, you will swap over to your APRS frequency, pick up your microphone and actually key the radio and announce your call sign, uh, your own APRS voice alert, and I like to go ahead and tell the station what frequency I'm monitoring. So if I saw uh, one of you guys pop up on my screen, you're within simplex, I don't know what frequency you're monitoring, I can simply select the APRS band, and I would say this is KM4ACK, APRS voice alert, monitoring 52 simplex. So what that does is that gives the other operator uh, a lot of information in a very short uh, in a very short transmission, 
And that is one thing, one of the good operating practices uh, that we'll go over later is keeping these transmissions as brief as possible. But what it does is it lets him know that that uh, audio he's hearing is coming over his APRS, state, uh, APRS band when you say on APRS voice alert. If you don't put that in there and he's monitoring a repeater, he might think it just came across the repeater and try to respond to you there. Uh, but by saying APRS voice alert in your transmission, you're alerting him that it's coming over the APRS frequency. In addition to that, I like to go ahead and give out uh, the frequency that I'm listening to. Normally, we're, because we're in simplex range, I can just say 5-2 simplex. That goes ahead and moves us off of the primary APRS frequency and moves us to another frequency where we can have a quick QSO or maybe uh, arrange a repeater uh, so that we would have greater distance. Maybe I'm out of town and he can give me uh, some quick information on a local repeater. I can then QSY off the simplex frequency over to the repeater to continue the QSO. Now, I will have to admit uh, occasionally I do hear random packets open up the squelch and sneak past the 100 tone. Uh, I'm not sure, maybe that's some uh, interference. Uh, maybe it's something that's right kind of at the edge of the simplex uh, range and you hear just part of the packet. You might not even get a decode on your radio. But for the vast majority of the time, it does keep the radio muted unless you hear another operator within simplex range. Okay, so let's go over a few good operating practices concerning this APRS voice alert. First, don't leave your rig unattended when you've got it set up for APRS voice alert. Uh, it's kind of like calling CQ, somebody answers you and then you don't return the call. Uh, so it's a good idea if you've got this running, just cut your radio off if you get out of the vehicle. Um, and that way you won't be broadcasting out a beacon. Somebody comes in simplex range, thinks they can get in touch with you, and then you just, no answer from you. Second, uh, we were talking about brief, um, brief transmissions using this. Uh, you want to keep that as short as possible because when you're transmitting uh, at on the APRS uh, packet frequency, you are affecting other packets inside your simplex uh, area. Now, if you're in a low-lying spot, you might not be affecting anybody more than a mile or so out. However, if you're up on a mountain somewhere, you could be affecting packets uh, 20, 30 miles out, even in simplex mode because of your, um, your elevation. So you wanna keep those transmissions as brief as possible and that's one of the reasons I like to go ahead and just tell the other station what other simplex frequency I'm monitoring. He really doesn't even have to reply to me at that point. Uh, so he hears me say APRS voice alert, my call sign, and I'm monitoring 5-2. I can go ahead and shift over to 5-2 simplex and he never has to respond on the APRS frequency. If he wants to uh, have a conversation, he can go ahead and just move to 5-2 simplex and we can carry on the QSO there. And I covered this already kind of briefly, but anytime you make this transmission, always uh, let the operator know by saying APRS voice alert that that's coming over the APRS band of his radio. If it's like the FTM 400 and he's monitoring two frequencies, uh, a repeater on band A, and uh, APRS on band B, he'll know which side of the radio that came from. Uh, again, if you don't put in that APRS voice alert, he's probably just gonna think that it came over his repeater uh, or the repeater that he's monitoring, and he's gonna go ahead and try to make contact with you there. One last good operating practice, if you are using APRS voice alert, uh, don't turn down the volume on the APRS side of your radio. Uh, again, it's like calling CQ with the volume cut down. Just not a very good way to operate. So leave that turned up so that you can hear other operators that may want to reach out and get in contact with you. All right, well that kind of covers the basics of APRS voice alert. 
Let's take a look at how to set up the FTM 400. All right, so you're looking at my FTM 400. Uh, so you'll see on the top band or band A, I'm monitoring my home uh, repeater frequency. And then on the bottom, I've got uh, APRS running. So let's take a look at how to set up voice alerts with the FTM 400. Uh, first thing you wanna do, and I'm gonna do my best to keep my hands out of the way of everything, uh, but you wanna press and hold the display button and come into your main setup menu. At that point, let's go ahead and touch the APRS uh, portion of the setup. And once we get into this, let's scroll down to the very bottom. It'll be menu item 32. Once we get into, uh, or once we see uh, the voice alert menu, let's go ahead and touch on that. And right here, under voice alert, you want to set it to tone squelch, and then you want to set the tone to 100 hertz. And guys, that's all there is to it to uh, go ahead and get voice alert set up on the FTM 400. Now, as you see other packets uh, coming across the radio, and I'm, I, I'm guessing I won't get any right now, uh, but I've got my volume turned all the way up. You can kind of see the volume indicator right there. Uh, but as other packets are broadcast out, I would still get the pop-up window on my radio that showed me the station or the object uh, or the repeater or whatever. Uh, but I would not see, or, or I'm sorry, I would not hear any audio coming uh, through the radio unless someone else has got voice alerts set up, transmitting out that 100 hertz tone. Uh, and was in simplex range. At that point, they would open the squelch on my radio and I actually would hear that. All right, guys, I hope you found this helpful. Uh, get out there and program up your radio uh, for APRS voice alerts. It's kind of a uh, neat way to meet up with other operators uh, when you're passing time driving down the interstate or even down a backcountry road, maybe. All right, guys, until next time, 7-3. Okay, and if you stuck around this long, here's a little bonus tip for you. Uh, well, at least a bonus tip if you use the FTM 400. Uh, have you ever, I tell you what, let me get a station list pulled up here and let's go down uh, to right here. Have you ever seen this come across your radio to where it has frequency information in it? Uh, this one is a repeater in our area. Uh, now, I'm not in range of it. This is probably a station that I picked up yesterday. Oop. Let me cut that down. Um, but if you've ever seen this come across where it's got the frequency and the tone and the offset and all of that in it, uh, have you ever wondered how to QSY to that? Well, here's something that I didn't know about the radio. If you are in... Let me get back out here. If you are in memory mode and then you go over to the station list. We'll come back down to that. Uh, let me see if I can find that same one. There it is. If you press the QSY button, you get a little double beep there, uh, basically indicating an error. It will not change the frequency of your radio. So it's on 443-900 is this repeater information. But if you go all the way back out, you'll see I'm still stuck on uh, this repeater that I have on the A-band. Here's the trick to it. You've got to be in the VFO mode. Once you're in the VFO mode, let's go back to that uh, same one right here. Uh, where, did that, where did that go? Let's see. I uh, believe that's it. All right, if, you, uh, if you're in the VFO mode and now you hit the QSY button, you get a long single tone. And if we go all the way back out, you're now on the right frequency with the right tone and the right offset plugged in to your A band. So something that I learned recently, I'm still learning about this radio as I go. Um, it, it's got a lot of bells and whistles on it, uh, so learning the ins and outs of every single one of them is going to take some time. But uh, just thought I would share that with you, a little bonus tip uh, for this one. All right, guys, have a good one. We will see you on the next video.
Until then, 7-3.